Welcome, 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 and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you, because the more information you have, the better decisions you will make. And I'd like to introduce Dr. O.J. Rustin and Dr. Ruth Austin. And thank you so much. I'm so glad you could join us. Oh, thank you. It's such nice a pleasure to, to have you here. Nice to see you. And you're at uh, Advanced Dermatology, located Correct. on the border of Badness Heights and uh, White Bear Township on mm -hmm. Centerville Road. Mm -hmm. And it's such a delight that you could come. I have both doctors here again, so I am just tickled pink. So great. this is great. And today's subject matter is going to be on acne. Now, it doesn't seem as if, you know, it's getting any better in our society. The kids are having, you know, a little bit more eating habits. Uh, that seems to get uh, to make it a little bit worse and um, uh, kind of contributes to the acne. And we kind of want to touch a little bit on that on this segment. So that would be great. And I guess, uh, you know, let's just kind of sum it up for everyone. We're targeting our whole audience. so. Um, I know that uh, acne appears at any age, and maybe you can embellish a little bit more as to why, you know, that happens. So, who would like to take that one? I can start with that. Okay, great. Acne or complexion problems, uh, as you mentioned, can be from a neonate that breaks out because of their mother's hormones to adolescent and sometimes even prepubescent uh, children can have problems with uh, acne conditions, and that can go all the way through. 20-year-olds uh, and beyond. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks of it as a, a teenage sort of condition, but it isn't. It's uh, a lot of times it's later in life, stressful situations in life make people break out a little bit more. And it's a multifactorial uh, sort of uh, condition. So uh, it's not only the factors we've talked about, but it's also the type of skin a person has, um, what sort of environment they live and work in, uh, the products they apply to their skin. So it's a lot of different things and uh, we take the time at Advanced Dermatology Care to, to evaluate people and to try to determine what their cause might be and to try to use that to help us figure out what's the best way to try to attack their problem. Mm -hmm. And people that are younger may have a different problem than people that are older. A lot of times you can distinguish between a younger person, they have more blackheads and whiteheads and pustules and deep cysts, while an older adult may have more just red papules and flushing and redness. They may have some of the deeper uh, cystic lesions that develop as well, and they sometimes have some thickening of the skin that can be associated with uh, breaking out and uh, the, uh, the adult condition called rosacea. Okay. When you think of acne, you know, I think of um, maybe someone not washing well or not scrubbing their face because of the oils on their skin or, you know, you see a lot of uh, other products that are drying up the skin, you know, taking the oil off of there. So is it due to maybe not washing well? Usually it's not just due to washing, not mm -hmm. washing and keeping clean, although it sometimes does take a little bit of adjustment for someone with acne to start to cleanse their skin on a regular basis. We usually recommend that somebody wash their skin twice a day. Mm -hmm. And for some teens that are just starting to get into those habits, that can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Usually it's more than just not uh, washing their face on a regular basis, though. It's really multifactorial. It's when they get a little bit older, their sebaceous glands start to become more active. There's bacteria on the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. um, dead skin cells don't slough off as readily when we have an acne condition or we also see that with aging too. And they can plug, uh, plug up some of the follicles and cause a little backup and that leads to a pimple or a cyst and so it kind of cycles from there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the problem we see is that sometimes people scrub too vigorously. Oh. There's some over-the-counter products where you can really abrade the skin and actually cause more infections and also risk of scarring. Oh. So we like to get people on a gentle and an effective regime mm -hmm. and that can be different for everyone depending on their individual skin type. Sure, so. yeah, and also their DNA and what they, you know, with their mm -hmm. parents or something. Their hereditary like factors, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at each of us individually which is really reassuring right. to know that, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. It's not that a s certain product will fix everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. In fact, that's, that's one of the things when people come to us and um, often adolescents want us 
to be able to give them something that will fix it. I mean, we all would like that. Oh, the but magic pill. Just, yeah, there uh -huh. just isn't anything like that. And it does take a little bit of try this, you know, teaching people how to use things and what regime to follow, and then to come back and let us know how it worked. And if it's not working, if it's too drying or too moisturizing or too strong or too gentle, you know, we can tweak a lot of different things. It's really a teamwork between your medical provider and you as the patient sure. so that we're picking something that's working really for your skin. And we fine tune things a lot that way. Yeah. Well, so. you have to react to their reactions. Exactly. You know, and yeah. what exactly happens. Mm -hmm. Cause, you know, it's like the philosophy, you know, one actual uh, drug doesn't fix all. You right. know, it's not that miracle drug that we can all take and it'll go away. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. A, a few yeah. little habits that they have to learn and mm -hmm. be preventative on their own, you know, which is really good. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to touch a little bit back on um, the diet. It seems like this society is fast food, fast this, fast that. I, I know that a lot of things contribute to what we put into our mouth, you know, flushes out, and our body has a way of detoxifying itself. And, um, you know, I don't know if acne, you know, also sees itself that way, but I kind of want you to talk a little bit about diet and acne, too. Diet in acne has been debated for years, and it's, it's difficult to do good diet studies because you have to exclude so many other factors. Okay. Um, some of the earlier studies didn't really show a strong association between diet and outbreaks, but there was a recent study that was actually really well done that showed that in, there was an increase in acne in the, the, control, the subject group that ate a lot of processed foods okay. versus non-processed foods. So that was really interesting to see. We do think that there's a certain subset of people that, in addition, um, some people will say, you know, eating a lot of chocolate or dark colas will make their acne worse. Mm -hmm. Those haven't been borne out in some of the larger studies, sure. and maybe because it's just a subset. Mm -hmm. But essentially, if you know what flares your your acne, then you know, stay away from that. Yeah. So. And you know your own body better than anyone. You know better than actually. Right. What can happen? The fried foods or yeah. You know. We do eat a lot of processed foods in our society, so we that was an interesting study to see. Yeah, it's so. very beneficial to see that, and mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are going organic now, too, mm -hmm. you know, and that might kind of help mm -hmm. their acne in that sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and we're talking about the society and how things go. We also need to talk about stress, mm -hmm. and does stress bring on all even more acne? Absolutely. A lot of times, as I mentioned earlier, people think acne is mainly an issue of the younger uh, population, but not infrequently, people start to break out uh, later in life, mm -hmm. uh, which they find surprising. They always think of it as being a younger person. Personally, medical school started making me break out. I never had a problem before that. Oh. So when I was in the mid-20s, uh, that started to help for me. And so a lot of people, <coughs> we have uh, greater stresses later in life, financial, emotional relationship um, so lots of things that are more chronic stresses than the uh, stress as a kid getting your tests done mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing doesn't impact your life quite as much as uh, or as dramatically as those later stresses so very uh, commonly stress will aggravate it and it seems to be that stress increases the level of testosterone in a person's body the testosterone stimulates oil production the more oil you produce the thicker uh, the oil, the more it clogs up the pores, and then you start to break out. So it's kind of that sort of cycle. Wow. So actually, you don't want to go back being a child again? <laughs> you have more <laughs> skills, but in a different way, so. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. really interesting mm -hmm. to know that. And so I want to talk about a little bit about, they say that the sun also, you know, because it'll dry up all your, the oil on your skin. You know, is that a myth or is that the truth that the sun actually um, does help acne? It's uh, both a myth and truth. Okay. Short term, it actually does because the sun has a strong infla anti inflammatory effect. Mm -hmm. And so, if you have an inflamed papule and you go out in the sun, that will shrink down that inflammation and it'll make your, your zit look like it's going away. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it does actually stimulate deeper down in the skin to rev up the oil production, produce more cysts, more acne. So, short term, You'll look good for a few days, but ultimately you'll actually get into a worse cycle where it's producing more and more acne lesions. Yeah. So it's actually, along with all the sun damage and the risk of skin cancer that can cause, it's better to not do that. Okay. In the um, 60s, we used to use actually UV light to treat acne. Mm -hmm. 
and found that you know short term it kind of helped, but it kind of people it actually made people's acne worse. Right, because of the.